We had this family on our show out of Slidell, Louisiana. Now they are suing uh, Calvary Baptist Church. This was after uh, the 12-year-old son, um, where the principal allegedly questioned the student's decision to braid his hair, asking him if he was being a gangster. His parents, Dolan Thorne, uh, the parents of Dolan Thorne, Ashley and Damon, uh, said the principal, Dr. Angela Messman, her comments were racially insensitive and failed to promote inclusion. Lawsuit filed in uh, Covington names the school, the principal, and Calvary Baptist Church defendants. The suit alleges the principal's actions caused a student emotional distress and violated a state law passed last year prohibiting discrimination based on a person's natural, protective, or cultural hairstyle. The family seeks unspecified damages and advocates for advocates for inclusion and racial sensitivity training at the school. This right here, Greg, is why the Crown Act is passed. Why Absolutely. It should be federal law blocked, blocked by Republicans. It was just passed in Texas. It's there in Louisiana. They've gone state by state. This is precisely why. Absolutely. Absolutely. The sister we saw last week at the White House with the uh, Juneteenth celebration, Ajua Batwe Osmoa, who came up and gave you a big hug, who has been the architect and the force behind the Crown Act as it makes its way through local and state legislatures, uh, is working on that federal legislation. And you're absolutely right. You know, Roland, I mean, I don't know what uh, Reginald Martin Sr. would have done if you had shown up at your house at that age with them braids on. I know what Haywood Carr would have done. But the fact of the matter is this isn't about cultural choice. This is about uh, the ability to wear your hair however the hell you want. And it's quite a thing to now at 58 years old walk around in the world and see black people with hair in whatever style we want. When there was a time when you couldn't wear your hair in braids or certainly sisters would be penalized, maybe not even higher if they wore it the way that it came out of their head at birth. But we're at a moment now where this is an inflection point. And, uh, you know, folk need to back up off the fact. I don't care how the boy's hair is done. You're not going to read anything into it. And if you keep messing around, you might lose your job messing with us. So, yeah, advance the Crown Act. It continues to march full speed ahead. A lot of folks, again, just don't understand this reality, uh, Candace, uh, of what black people have to face when uh, we are being singled out because of our hair. Not. They love, to, they love, quote, MLK content of character, but it's amazing <laughs> how they love marginalizing us because of our hair. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I guess I'm, you're speaking to exhibit one, someone who's been told over the years for the past 34 years that my hair is inappropriate for the workplace or, oh, wow, you look like Raggedy Ann. Oh, when I had it big and curly. I mean, it, it, it really depends. And I've seen the whole trajectory change. As you said, people like Bonnie Watson Coleman um, and the other young woman that Dr. Carr mentioned, they are trying to push Crown, Op Crown Act on a federal level. It hasn't happened yet. And you know why? It's because people do discriminate against hair. And this is a shame because this is a lawsuit that's going to be easily won because the Crown Act does exist in this state. This was a violation that was based on race because that's how his hair grows out of his head. And he can style it any way he wants to. The same way that a Native American should and can wear their hair long. The same way that a Hasidic Jew is allowed to wear their hair curly on the sides and also cover their hair. These are things that we don't look at. But when it comes to African-Americans, especially African-American women, you better believe that there is a double standard even now with the Crown Act passed in states. I know women who straighten their hair for the interview. And then once they cross that hiring mark, then they go curly or then they get braids or then they do what they have to do because you might have that act on paper. But then you have to deal with that real person who is hiring you across the table. And that is the issue. I talk to black women all the time. I teach a class called um, Natural Hair and Tangled Politics, and we talk about the history of hair from the slave ship all the way up to 2023. And what's going on right now is that this young person is going to win their case. Why? Because there are laws on the books, and those laws specifically say what they did um, against him was illegal. And that is where we are right now. It is unfortunate, uh, but it is something that exists. You've got the violation of his civil rights, you've got racism involved, and you've got intentional infliction of emotional distress. Because how is this person going to exist in their classroom, not even being able to be there themselves? These are people who are discriminating against men and women because of the hair that goes out of our head. It's just like freckles. It's just like any other physical 
uh, uh, trait that people might have. And it is unfortunate that we have to force people to put laws on the books, laws that aren't even federal yet, because it's being blocked by Republicans. This seems to be where the situation and the conversation this whole night has ended. The Republicans are stopping the progress. And that's what I have to say about that. Reese? Well, I, I, what I think I think is interesting is often when we have the discussion about the Crown Act, when we have the discussion about hair discrimination, people automatically think that this is a black women's issue. But we now have multiple high profile cases of black men experiencing this discrimination, too. I'm sure people remember the wrestler who was forced to hum, uh, humiliatingly cut out his um, locks in order to continue with the wrestling match, which was a violation of, of his. Um, and now we see this situation in Louisiana. There have been other situations in Texas before the Crown Act. And so what I would like to see is I would like to see solidarity within the Black community of recognizing that this hair discrimination is not a Black woman issue. It's not a Black man issue. It's a Black issue. It's a social justice issue. It's an economic issue, economic justice issue. And I'm so happy to see Black people getting more litigious because guess what? If people <laughs> do us wrong, if you ain't gonna throw hands, at least you can sue their ass. <laughs> 